Brothers and sisters, it's that time of the week again. It's worship time here at Light of the World Church of Christ. We pray that you will enjoy this service and you will have a peacock proud moment worshiping with us this morning. To our guests and visitors, we appreciate you tuning in this morning. We surely do pray that you get a blessing from the message this morning and that you will tune in to our next appointed time next week. And to our members, we love you and we miss you. And we can't wait till we can get together again to worship together in spirit and in truth. But until that time, please enjoy this virtual worship service and remember to walk in the light as he is in the light. Father, we come before you at this time thanking you for blessing us with just another day to come together to worship your high and holy name. And Lord, as we conduct this worship service, we just pray that you watch over us, guide our thoughts, guide our actions, and help us to do what's pleasing in your sight. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Get back. 
back up again. Oh, 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 yeah.
For I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as oft as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Dear merciful Father, as we come before you at this time, thanking you for your son's matchless sacrifice. We ask that those who would partake of his broken body, which is represented by the bread, and his shed blood, which is represented by the cup. We ask that we take it in a manner well pleasing in thy sight, with clean hands and clean hearts. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We have come to a portion of our service which is known as collection. And though we are not here together, we know that it is our responsibility to bring forth into the storehouses of the church that a portion of which God has blessed us with. So at this time, if you wish, you may go online and submit your tithes and offerings, or you may come here to the church on Saturday morning between 10 and noon and submit your tithes and offering in person. Either way, we thank you for your offering. We thank you for your support. And we know that God will continue to bless you for your offering. Let's pray at this time. Father, we thank you for this day, this opportunity to give back to you a portion of what you said so richly blessed us with. And we pray, Lord, that as we partake in this offering, that you will watch over those who are responsible for it. Guide them, Lord, so we may always be about the upbuilding of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, light of the world. Praise God, hallelujah for the Lamb. Uh, last week, uh, we, we closed uh, our sermon, um, uh, uh, legal but not moral, uh, by noting that um, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ specializes in psychiatry and dermatology and gynecology. Uh, this week, I want us to understand that um, the God we serve also specializes in biology. In our text this morning, he is not concerned with uh, medical ethics. He is not concerned with uh, company policy. He's not concerned with the uh, Hippocratic Oath. Uh, here, Jesus showed up. Now, what does he do when he shows up? What does he do when he breaks policy? Uh, let's look at uh, verse number 12, uh, where uh, Jesus broke policy. Number one, he broke policy because he saw someone pressing in spite of their pain. Uh, verse number 10 says this, and when he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, and behold, there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity 18 years. And the Bible says she was bowed together and could in no wise, watch this now, and then could no wise lift up herself. She had a spirit of infirmity. That word there is uh, uh, asthenia. Uh, she had a spirit uh, of asthenia. 
it is a spirit of weakness. The message Bible says she was so weak that she could hardly look up. Eugene Peterson says she suffers here perhaps from an arthritic condition. Some other commentators have suggested that she suffers what is called uh, acute scoliosis, which was an extreme uh, curvature of the spine that left her literally almost in a paralytic condition. She's bent out of shape. She's bowed, King James Version, together. She's gone through something with her anatomy where her spine, brothers and sisters, is literally curved in so much that one writer said her chest was perpetually on her knees. She's bent out of shape. And brothers and sisters, I'm here to tell you this may be a physical condition, but it has metaphorical possibilities because your back can be straight as an ironing board, but life has a way of bending you out of shape. Somebody looks good on the outside. Oh yeah. But financially, you know, you've been bent out of shape. Your wife has a win a way <laughs> Help me somebody. Your wife brothers, married brothers are bending you out of shape. Every time you come home and, and you see a uh, sister in uh, flammable pajamas and uh, at your mama has an at your mama rag wrapped around her head and has that that uh, that, uh, that 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 sweat that sweatshirt that she had when she was in high school with Noxima on her face. Uh, that has a way of bending you out of shape. There's a wife who's listening to me uh, on the internet today who, who can testify that a husband uh, sometimes bends her out of shape because he has a beer in one hand and a remote control in the other hand. Won't help you bring in the groceries. Won't help you cut the grass. Won't, won't clean up the room. Won't leave the toilet uh, lid down uh, when he's done. It has a way of bending you out of shape. There are some parents listening to me that can testify that your children can sometimes bend you out of shape because the more you buy for your children, the less they appreciate uh, what you've done for them. And that has a way of bending you out of shape. Some of, some of us have sisters and brothers and nieces and nephews who bend us out of shape because they, they borrow money from us and then they act like uh, we, they haven't borrowed the money from us and sometimes that bends us out of shape. But I got some good news for you this morning. Whenever the Lord sees somebody who's bent out of shape, it is at that moment he has a way of stepping into your situation. So my question for God is, why do you let us, as your children, get bent out of shape? And then I thought about when I first went fishing uh, many, many years ago in uh, East Texas. Uh, I never sh shall forget the first uh, rod that I bought. It was called a Zepco 33. And uh, I was... Uh, uh, given or told about this zip code 33 because it would be uh, easy for me uh, to handle since I was a first time uh, fisherman and uh, most uh, beginners like the zip code 33 because of the way it bends so uh, the people with me they put something on my float and they told me uh, to watch the bend of the rod because the more it bends the bigger <laughs> your catch I love this. Some of y'all missed that. Watch this. Some of you are wondering, why have you been bent so far out of, show, out of shape? And God uh, sent me here this morning to tell you the reason you've been bent so far out of shape is because he has a blessing waiting for you bigger than anything that you've ever imagined. And so if you can endure the being, if you can endure 
the pandemic, if you can endure uh, the economy going down, if you can endure sickness and death and pain and sorrow, if you can endure uh, unemployment and under in underemployment, the, if you can endure that, he's got a blessing waiting for you that's bigger than anything that you have ever had. And so if you can endure it, and if you can just keep on keeping on, God will help you to deal with being bent out of shape. And so uh, Jesus in our text, he, he defies the law because he saw one, he saw someone pressing in spite of their pain. Write that down. He, he, he saw someone pressing in spite of their pain. But not only does he defies the law because he saw one pressing despite uh, their pain, but secondly, secondly, he defies the law because he's, a, he's aware of when problems are persistent. Jesus is aware of when problems are persistent. She had been suffering from, as I stated, acute scoliosis. She had uh, had this extreme uh, curvature in her spine, which her, left her uh, uh, paralytic. But Dr. Luke, can you give us some more insight about her prognosis? He said, of course I can. Uh, uh, light of the world, she's been like this for 18 years. And while she was hurting, uh, they were up there uh, on Capitol Hill, if you'll allow me to use my uh, sanctified imagination. They were up there on uh, Capitol Hill on Jerusalem Boulevard arguing the benefits of Jesus care. For 18 years, folk have taken her copay without offering her a panacea. She could not get uh, uh, some uh, insurance benefits because she had a pre-existing condition. Nothing she had tried had worked, but in spite of how jacked up she was, she must have heard Jesus was passing by. She had been like this for 6,570 days. She had been like this for 936 weeks. She had been like this for 216 months. She had been like this for 157,680 hours. She had been like this for 9,434,880 minutes. She had been suffering like this for 18 long years. But what she said is this, all I need to do is have an encounter with the master. I love this. I wish I had somebody who could testify that you've been going through problems year after year after year and, and 2020 has been hell and high water and you've been looking for an answer to your situation. It's at that moment the Lord can show up. Won't he show up? and deliver? Won't he bring you out of situations that have been persistent in your life? He can defy the law and Jesus can break policy. Thank God, thank God that for 400 years since the 1600s, Africans were brought from West Africa to America as slaves and had to deal with being treated less than human brought through the, the middle passage, thrown overboard, stripped from their families and friends, robbed of their indigenous names, had to deal with Plessy versus Ferguson, been dealt with uh, like three-fifths of a human being, dealt with Jim Crow, dealt with separate but not equal, and after all of that, 50 years ago, LBJ signs the Voting Rights Act, and people think we've already overcome. We haven't overcome. We've been overrun. And I'm here to tell you that we've only had the right to vote for 50 years, and we have not overcome. But the good news is, 
that after 401 years, he's still been the God of our weary years. After 401 years, he's still been the God of our silent tears. He's still been the God uh, who's brought us thus far on the way. Listen, I don't care how long you've been dealing with that situation. Brothers and sisters, I'm here to tell you, don't give up. Don't give up on God. Don't throw up the white flag of surrender. Don't throw in the towel. Don't jump off of some bridge. Don't put some bullet in your head. Don't you give up on God. Listen, I don't care how long. I don't care how long you've been dealing with this situation. Don't give up. On God. Maybe you've been dealing with a bad marriage for 12 years. Maybe you've been sick for 18 years. Maybe you've had some incurable disease for more than 20 years, but we serve a God that has a way of showing up, and we have a God that has a way of showing out. If you just don't give up, I'm here to tell you, he'll break policy. He saw someone pressing in spite of their pain. He's aware of when problems are persistent. But finally, he'll break policy because he has a passion for those who are perplexed. Watch this. The text says, she could in no wise lift up herself. But here's what blessed me. Verse 12, this was what blessed me. Verse 12, I'm about to shout you. Verse 12, and when Jesus saw her, he saw her. <laughs> yes, but watch this. He also sees you and me. Uh huh. He sees our ups and downs. He's aware of our struggles. He sees our problems. He sees our trials, our troubles, our tribulations. He knows all about our pains, our problems, and our persecutions. He knows that we have headaches and heartaches and heartbreaks. He knows that we are disappointed, discouraged, and disillusioned, disavowed, and, 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 and discriminated against. But he's got something that moves on the optic nerves of his omniscient eyes and enables him to look beyond our faults and see our needs. Somebody can declare his eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. I feel my hoop coming. The text says he saw her. But then when he had compassion on her, uh, the text says he had compassion on her, but not only did he see her, but next, I love this, he spoke to her. He spoke to her, brothers and sisters, in that same voice that said, let there be light. And that which was not started straining to become. He said, let there be light. And out of stingy and darkness came radiant light. He said, let there be I love that, that same voice that, that put a wetness in water, that same voice that put whiteness in the snow, that same voice that put uh, vicosity in the oil, that same voice, voice spoke to her. And I've got good news. I got news. I got good news for you this morning. He's still speaking. Ain't that good news? He'll, he's saying this morning to your storm, peace, <laughs> be still. He's still saying if you have faith of a grain of a mustard seed, you can say to your mountain, cast thyself into the sea. But watch this, watch this. It wasn't his sight that blessed her. It wasn't his voice that blessed her. The text says that after he saw her and after he spoke to her thoroughly, I love this, he touched her. Anybody in here other than me needs to be touched? Let me ask you, have you ever been uh, blessed or touched by the hand of Jesus? I'm glad. I don't know about you, but I'm glad. Verse 13, he touched me. He put his hands on her. Immediately, she straightened up and praised God. Listen, whenever you've really been touched and, and stuff in your life that has, been, uh, that has bent you out of shape, it, it straightens up every now and then. 
when you've been straightened up. You can't do nothing but praise God. And he says that if it, if it, had been, uh, for, if it hadn't been for the Lord that was on my side. Some of us can say that if we've been touched. If it hadn't been for the Lord that was on our side we would have utterly been destroyed. Verse 14, even though this woman got straightened out, even though those HNICs, the church folk, the church leaders got mad, well, I'm, I'm sorry to tell you, if you're related to any of those leaders, you're going to get mad at me because you don't know what I know and you don't know how I know that the Lord has been good to me. He picked me up turn me around, turn me upside down in order to turn me right side up. He woke me up this morning and started me on my way. I don't know why he did it, but I thank God. I praise God. I say hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You've been good to me more than these weary eyes could ever see. So thank you. Thank you. Praise God. Thank you for blessing us when we were bent out of shape. Thank you for helping us when things got tough, when things got rough. We had a God that says, I'm going to touch you. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to keep you. I'm going to cover you. I'm going to save you. I'm going to deliver you. And I'm going to bless you. Anyway, if you're here this morning and you listen to me, you've heard the word, you know that Jesus sent his son to die for us. And how three days later, there was a shout in the cemetery. And he said, all power came and snatched the gates of hell and death off his hinges, raised them up in the air and said, I'm he who was dead, but now I'm alive forevermore. You, you have to believe that. And after you believe that, it ought to, Convict you out or change something in you where you want to live for him, where you repent of your past sins. The Bible says in Acts 17, 30, in time past, God winked at this ignorance. Now he commanded all men everywhere to repent. But that's not where it stops. You have to do what first century Christians did and it caused them their lives. Up until the fourth century, up until where Constantine signed the Addictum alone, you have to confess that he is the Christ, the Son of the living God. It brought death to him, but it will bring life to you forevermore. Not before, but after you have completed your obedience by being buried with him in water for the remission of your sins. Come up out of that water, remain faithful, faithful until you die. And remember, it's not the water that saves us. It's God that saves us in the water, through the water. God does the saving. And then all we can do is just do our best to remain faithful until we die. And like the members of our church who had loved ones to go to sleep, he'll say to them and us, well done one day, my good and faithful servants. You've been faithful over a few things. Now I make you a rule over many. Come on up just a little bit higher and reign with me. If you're already a child of God and COVID-19, this pandemic and the economy and sickness and death has bent you out of shape, I want you to know we serve a God who can touch you. Who can fix it? Who can straighten it out? Trust God. Never doubt him. We know too much about him. May God bless you. And may you continue to walk in the light as he's in the light. And we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all of our sins. Ooh,